Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to give folks about five more minutes to jump on and then we'll get started. Appreciate your patience. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're going to give folks about two or three more minutes to jump on and then we'll get started. Appreciate your patience. Hi everyone, we still have a lot of folks jumping on, so we're gonna give about two more minutes and then we'll get started. We appreciate your patience. Hi everyone, I'm excited to welcome you to Stocking the Digital Shelf, creating exceptional shopper experiences and building shopper loyalty in the quickly evolving world of grocery e-commerce. I'm Lauren Gibbons and I'm part of our marketing team here at Label Insight. And on behalf of all of us at Label Insight, thank you so much for being here today. We truly appreciate you spending this hour with us and as we're all working from home, we also appreciate your patience if there are any technical glitches. A few housekeeping notes just before we get going. 
This webinar is being recorded and you'll receive an email with a link to view the recording within 24 hours. Since we do have such a large group today, you're an attendee in listen only mode. So please use the Q&A feature in the bottom middle panel to ask any questions. We'll be monitoring that Q&A throughout the webinar and we'll save time to answer the questions at the end. If we're not able to answer your question live today, we'll be sure to get back to you with an answer within 24 hours. And if you have any technical issues, you can use the raise hand feature also in the bottom middle panel and one of us will chat you directly to help you resolve. Finally, we'd love to hear from you after the webinar. So if a question pops up after you leave here today, feel free to reach out anytime to marketing at labelinsight.com and we'll make sure your question gets answered. Your presenters today are Dave Byman and Daniel Hawks. Dave is the head of enterprise sales here at Label Insight. He advises companies like Target, Instacart, Google, Amazon, Unilever, and Pepsi on how to drive sales growth and meet consumer demand for transparency. Daniel is the head of product management for e-commerce and has spent the last six years helping connect consumers to the products they're looking for through technology. He's worked on projects with Apple, Google, Instacart, major retailers, and CPGs. Dave, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Lauren, uh, and thank you to all of our attendees. Uh, we want to start by welcoming this esteemed group of close to 200 participants. We're truly thrilled to have representation from such a great cross-sectional leaders throughout our industry today. Just take a look at some of these logos. Leading CPGs like Unilever, Pepsi, Tyson, Nestle, Clorox, Beambo, McCormick, Coca-Cola, Campbell's, Johnson & Johnson, Kraft Heinz, Mondelez, Kellogg's. We've got leading retailers like Albertsons, Amazon, Starbucks, Ahold, Come and Go. We've got leaders today from e-commerce, but also leaders in disciplines including regulatory, sales, brand, marketing, supply chain, customer service, and more. So thank you again to this distinguished group for devoting an hour of your time with us today. Over the course of the balance of the hour, we'll share with you the market dynamics accelerated in our industry that have led to massive demand for product knowledge and our industry's failure to effectively respond with adequate supply. Consumers today have an extensive, endlessly varied list of things they care about when shopping for CPG products online. Ingredients, nutrients, allergens, diets, functional benefits, environmental stewardship, animal welfare, and human rights. We think of these at Label Insight as product attributes. What we'll show you today is how this massive demand for product attributes are being underserved by brands whose portfolios of products meet those needs, but fail to communicate that they do and how it's costing them billions of dollars. We'll share how hundreds of millions of consumer searches are going unfulfilled for products that in fact fulfill the need and want states of consumers and how solving this problem can help brands grow their e-commerce business by 15 to 30% without spending a single additional dollar in online ad spend. Here's one example. Ketogenic is the fifth most searched for attribute across all grocery categories online to the tune of nearly three quarters of a million searches on Amazon in the last month alone. And yet, 98% of the products that qualify that are in fact ketogenic fail to make the claim. In the last month alone, this amounted to 325 million consumer trips to the digital store in which products that met the need failed to be discovered at the digital shelf. This serves as one of literally thousands of examples of an attribute consumers care about that they're searching for online only to arrive at the digital shelf unable to find the tens of thousands or more products that meet their needs and wants because it's digitally out of stock because it failed to make the claim and therefore failed to be discovered and never had a chance to be bought. So in this webinar, we'll dig into the recent and accelerating changes in consumer behavior for CPG products online, how these changes are impacting consumers and the businesses of brands and retailers, why it's critical to tap into what Label Insight describes as unclaimed product attributes, and most importantly, how Label Insight can help to solve this challenge and turn this problem into massive opportunity for e-commerce revenue growth. So this likely comes as news to no one on this webinar. Today's shopper behavior is complex and growing increasingly so. Consumers today have more questions about the products they use and consume than brands and retailers have answers, and these market dynamics continue to gain momentum. Either we ourselves or a family member or a loved one or friend are either actively seeking out certain characteristics in the products we buy or are actively avoiding them. In primary research label insight conducted with the Food Marketing Institute last year, we found that 44% of shoppers say a food allergy, sensitivity, or intolerance affects the way they shop, and that almost 50% adhere to some form of diet or health-related eating program. 
In a refresh study we plan to publish next month, we've seen those figures only continue to grow to as high as 65%. And we see it everywhere in our lives, in schools, in restaurants, on TV, in the grocery store. We're bombarded with and obsessed by how a product does or does not align to our unique set of needs and wants. Health dominates consumer motivations. Food is used as medicine to treat and prevent a wide array of medical conditions, ailments, lifestyles, and life stages. And more than 70% of shoppers indicate they are looking for specific attributes that are important to them when choosing a brand. And we're also changing how we shop. And for the last 100 years, the point of sale has been executed upon in brick and mortar retail. Shelves are always stocked. Well, maybe not in the last couple of weeks with toilet paper and hand sanitizer, but in a physical world, we can see everything in the store. We could shop by aisle, by shelf, by category. We walked up and down through the store the way brands and retailers designed the experience for us. But today, everything's changed. We wanna create our own personalized experiences. The new point of sale is what we would describe as the point of search. And in a search-driven online world, your digital inventory is only stocked as effectively as your ability to tag your products with the attributes consumers are searching for. Without it, your digital shelf is depleted because we don't shop by category anymore. We shop by need state. We shop by attribute. We expect our digital store to be laid out, personalized to our needs and wants by the attributes that matter to us. We wanna virtually stroll a ketogenic or gluten-free aisle or whatever our personal preferences may be, which may vary from aisle to aisle, category to category. And these changes continue to accelerate. Prior to COVID-19, e-commerce grocery was the world's fastest growing online category. In the last 30 days, we've seen what feels like two years of growth condensed into a month. Grocery apps, online ordering, curbside pickup, and last mile delivery have seen record downloads and growth by as much as 218%. And for many consumers, this last month has marked their first experience shopping for groceries online. Over the last month, as the world stays home to prevent the spread of coronavirus, we've seen search volume increase between three to nine times across the channels listed here. So we want to share how you can unlock the value of attribute data through search to ensure it's an optimized experience for the consumer and one that will help you to grow your e-commerce business. At the risk of belaboring the point, uh, say it again, online grocery is growing and it's growing a lot. Up 35% in compounded annual growth rate from the previous year in 2018 to $26 billion, online grocery revenue is projected to grow to $70 billion in 2021 and to nearly $120 billion by 2023. To optimally ride this wave, brands and retailers must unlock the value in getting organic search right. 80% of searches for food and beverage products online are organic and unbranded. That means consumers are increasingly searching for attributes. They're putting their need states first and they're putting brand preference second. And it's put brand loyalty in question in an online world. And in that online world in which consumers are searching for products by attribute, organic search needs to be a great shopper experience to maximize revenue growth. Today though, search and discovery is broken in online grocery. A search on Amazon, as you can see here for peanut free, returns peanut butter, peanuts, and ice cream with peanuts in it. A search for egg free returns a carton of eggs. The examples of a relevant search results go on and on and on. And for the millions of consumers suffering from allergies for which getting this right has potentially critical consequences, this is a critical shortcoming in our industry. And perhaps worse yet, the list of searches that return zero or woefully limited results is just as rampant. Consumers are seeking out a vast array of attributes, ketogenic, gluten-free, low sodium, paraben-free, sustainable, no artificial ingredients, whole 30, paleo, nutrient dense, minimally processed, whole grain, and on and on and on and on. And finding a depleted digital shelf with either very few or entirely irrelevant search results. This broken experience not only belies the trust of the consumer and the retailer, the manufacturer, which might cause them to seek out other channels or try new brands, it's also an enormously missed opportunity to capture the loyalty and spend to consumers that are willing to pay more and buy more of the products that meet their individualized needs and wants. So let's dig into some of our research. By combining consumer keyword search data from top channels like Amazon, Walmart, and Kroger, with our database of more than half a million CPG products and the more than 24,000 attributes we're able to identify for each, we've discovered some astonishing insights. More than half of food products fail to claim their single most searched for attribute. Let me repeat that. More than half of food products fail to claim their single most searched for attribute. And by failing to claim their top attribute, every single one of these UPCs failed to be discovered from close to 90,000 digital shopping trips on Amazon in Q4 alone. Think about that. There are ketogenic, 
high protein, sugar free, gluten free, vegan, low carb, healthy, sulfate free, alcohol free, paraben free products. Consumers are searching for by the hundreds of millions going undiscovered because they're failing to make the claim at the digital shelf. If you're a brand with just 100 products in your portfolio, on Amazon alone, simply by failing to claim one attribute, they're missing out on more than 35 million opportunities to be found. 35 million instances in which their products are digitally out of stock because they're not leveraging the data inherent to their formulation to enable them to be discovered. For a brand with 1,000 products, that number jumps to more than 350 million instances of digital out of stocks and just on Amazon alone, and just for one attribute. So when you consider that nearly 90% of food products fail to claim at least one of their three most searched for attributes, the scope of this problem becomes even more significant. And you know, most of us have probably experienced this for ourselves when shopping for groceries online. A digital trip to Kroger for nitrate-free bacon returns zero results. A digital trip to my own Mariano's in Chicago for products that adhere to the paleo diet which, by the way, I unsuccessfully tried to follow to shed my newfound quarantine 15, came back at zero. Their digital shelf is empty. You know, to be sure, Kroger has a number of nitrate-free bacon products in stock, but their digital shelf is empty because they're not leveraging the data to stock it. Mariano's, no doubt, has a wide assortment of paleo products, but in their digital store, those shelves are empty. On a digital trip to Costco, perhaps already dismayed to find them out of toilet paper, a search for paraben-free shampoo comes back with nothing. A search for keto diet returns just a single result, collagen peptides. You know, a good source of protein, absolutely, but certainly not enough balance of assortment to be a part of one's complete breakfast for those looking to follow the keto diet. I love Fresh Market. They have a huge assortment of organic foods, and I'm told by my friends with babies, great options for baby food. And yet, a digital trip to their store for organic baby foods returns just one result for organic baby corn. Organic, yes, babies, maybe, but organic food for babies, certainly not. Public shoppers are fiercely loyal. They rave about their local public store. So too, though, are consumers actively avoiding ingredients like triclosan and personal care products because of evidence that links the consumption of that ingredient to cancer. Publix's digital shelf is depleted for these consumers. And what about heart health? Of the 29 page one search results for heart healthy, 26 are either animal hearts, artichoke hearts, or hearts of palm. Are those products heart healthy? Maybe, but certainly not what the consumer meant or what they were searching for, and obviously not representative of public's assortment of thousands of products across their digital store that in fact contribute to heart health. Back to Amazon. A search for nut-free desserts returns chocolate-covered walnuts, a bag of almonds, macadamia nut cookies, peanut butter snack bars, and hazelnut spread. For consumers suffering from a peanut allergy, with the consequences of consumption as severe as they are, this is not only a huge missed opportunity to capture consumer loyalty and increase spend, it's potentially dangerous misinformation. Growing up in Chicago, my family loved getting groceries delivered from Peapod. And thankfully, I grew up in an era when my mom didn't know what clean snacks were. We had a lot of Big Newtons and fruit roll-ups. But you know, for the modern health-conscious consumer for which eating clean is an indispensable part of their lifestyle, to have a digital trip for clean snacks return only plastic Ziploc bags for storing snacks, this is a big miss from Peapod and a big miss for the thousands of brands manufacturing delicious, nutritious, clean snacks. Okay, last one, Whole Foods. They care about health and wellness as much as anyone, right? But a search on their site for sugar-free snacks returns close to nothing but brown sugar oatmeal and bags of cane sugar. Thanks, Dave. Uh, you just saw several in the wild examples of real searches that consumers are making online every day that are failing to deliver relevant results. The experience varies brand to brand and retailer to retailer, but one thing is universal. To at least some degree, the search experience is broken everywhere you look. Over the past six months or so, Dave and I have talked to e-commerce leaders from at least 100 CPGs and most agree that this is a problem for them. We've compiled a list of the most common barriers we've heard to addressing this problem. And I'd like to take a minute to poll the audience to see what your barriers are. So the question is, which statement best describes your organization's approach to improving online product discoverability? First option, we're fully optimizing our product discoverability by claiming highly searched product attributes in our online product content. We wanna claim additional attributes, but regulatory concerns restrict what we can say. We don't fully understand what attributes our products could qualify for or which ones matter for search. 
or we're currently focused on basic item setup and not focused on online content optimization. So we'll give, uh, give folks a couple more seconds to uh, record their answer and, and we'll bring this interactive poll back up uh, in a few slides. All right, here's some stats that illustrate the scope of this discoverability problem. Vegan, for example, is the seventh most frequently searched attribute across all food categories, but two thirds of the products that qualify as vegan based on their ingredients aren't claiming it and therefore are not showing up in results. And this might be an example where brands are taking a brick and mortar mindset into e-commerce and it doesn't translate. The thinking goes that it's obvious to a shopper that a bag of baby carrots is vegan and therefore calling it out as vegan is pointless, but that doesn't account for the 73,000 Amazon searches per month for vegan or the 22,000 searches for vegan snacks or the 7,000 searches for vegan food and so on and so on where these carrots aren't showing up despite being very much vegan. So now we'll take a look at the, uh, the poll results. Thanks everybody for recording your, uh, your responses. So five of you said that you're fully optimizing uh, your product discoverability by claiming highly searched product attributes. I commend you for making attributes a priority. Uh, you're, you're clearly uh, ahead of the curve in this regard. Uh, 12 of you said, we want to claim additional attributes, but regulatory concerns restrict what we can say. This is one we hear a lot from brands, especially larger ones where they often feel like they're at a disadvantage compared to smaller brands who uh, they feel like can get away with more because there's less risk of litigation or they only have to talk to one person to get sign off to claim something new in their content. Uh, it looks like uh, the most people said uh, that you don't fully understand what attributes your products could qualify for or which ones matter most for search. So hopefully, uh, you know, we've opened some eyes today to this problem. And then lastly, uh, a lot of you are focused on basic item setup and not yet focused on online content optimization. From our conversations, uh, many of you have told us that your teams are small, that e-commerce is a relatively new priority for your company, and that you don't have the tools and resources to effectively manage the different data sources and item setup requirements that are required to get your products for sale online, much less to even think about how to optimize that content. And this issue in organic search extends to paid search as well. In 2020, CPGs are expected to spend nearly $13 billion on digital ads. And there's an opportunity to leverage attribute data to get a better return on that investment. There's an underserved population of consumers with specific need states who are searching for attributes and seeing irrelevant ads. For brands with smaller ad budgets, targeting attribute keywords can be a winning strategy, but there's less competition, a lower cost per click, and you've got an audience that's more likely to develop brand loyalty once they find a product that meets their specific need. In some cases, the broken paid search experience is actually costing brands money. In this example uh, from Amazon, a search for egg-free mayo results in a paid listing for mayonnaise that's made with cage-free eggs. Assuming that some percentage of shoppers will click on this product thinking that it's free from eggs because why would Amazon show me a product that contains eggs when I search for egg-free? Uh, this is gonna lead to one of two bad outcomes. Either the brand pays for that click and the consumer doesn't purchase because they realize that the product isn't egg-free after all, or the brand pays for that click and the consumer ends up really unhappy with their purchase. In either case, the brand loses and the consumer loses. The scale of the gap between consumer demand and the shopping experience is pretty staggering when you take it as a whole. You have manufacturers with hundreds or even thousands of products in their portfolios with every UPC failing to show up in tens to hundreds of thousands of eligible searches each month the missed opportunity is pretty massive. This chart illustrates that nobody is impervious and all brands have the potential to tap into millions of dollars in additional revenue. These stats were pulled from a more exhaustive list of 800 CPGs. So if you don't see your company listed here 
or if you do and you want more information, we can follow up with the report that summarizes our methodology and findings. In addition to capitalizing on searches for attributes that their products qualify for, brands can leverage their attributes to increase click-through rates. We analyzed tens of millions of shopper interactions where we had access to the exact term a consumer searched and the title and rank of the product they subsequently clicked on. When a consumer search included an attribute, let's take an example like vegan snack bars, for example, products that included vegan as an attribute in their product title, title were two and a half times as likely to receive a click and they ranked an average of 41 spots higher on the page. We can take this a step further, where an attribute appears within the product title also has an impact. Again, consumer searches for vegan snack bars, products that include vegan within the first 40 characters of the title rank 10 spots higher on the page compared to products where vegan still appears in the title but after the first 40 characters, and they receive two times as many clicks. With the right data set, brands can optimize their product titles for each site around the most sought after attributes. There's also value in understanding the specific terms that consumers search. For example, carb free, no carb, and zero carb are different ways that consumers search for the same attribute. But consumers are several times more likely to use the specific phrase zero carb in search. But when we analyzed over a thousand product titles being sold online, brands were including no carb in their title 80% of the time. In addition to knowing how consumers search for attributes and how often, brands can win online with timely content updates. Consumer search trends change frequently over time due to a variety of factors such as seasonality, the pervasiveness of social media, and more recently due to changes in our shopping behavior related to COVID. In the past month, we've observed observe the huge increases you would expect in pantry attributes such as cured, canned, frozen, dried, and family size. But other trends are maybe not so obvious or expected. Lactose free, for example, is up 578% on Instacart. Low sodium increased 2,800% and searches for products with vitamin C increased by 7,000%. Now more than ever, it's important that brands are synchronizing their content updates with the latest trends. And not only do search trends change over time, but there's, there are significant differences between retailers. In the past month, overall search volume is up significantly for nearly every attribute across all retailers. But as a share of total volume, gluten-free searches have doubled on shipped, whereas Walmart saw a slight decrease. Organic, on the other hand, increased across all of the retailers we track with the exception of shipped, where it's slightly lower as a share of overall search. These retailer specific contrasts are even more severe at the category level as evidenced by the stats you see on the screen related to breakfast bars. In fact, uh, of, of the 121 most searched attributes, 42% of the time they were exclusive to one of these channels. The key takeaway here is that a one size fits all approach to attributes doesn't work for e-commerce. Great, thanks Daniel. So let's recap with some, some additional key takeaways. 80% of searches for food and beverage products online are organic and unbranded. That means consumers are increasingly shopping for attributes. They're putting their need states first and they're putting brand preference second. This massive demand for product attributes are being underserved by brands whose portfolios of products meet those needs, but fail to communicate that they do. Hundreds of millions of consumer searches are going unfulfilled for products that in fact fulfill the need and want states of consumers, and it's costing brands and retailers billions of dollars. The way to solve this problem is by effectively leveraging product attribute data. It's free advertising for brands and retailers. It builds loyalty and brand awareness and enables discoverability, conversion, and trial. Tapping into the unclaimed attributes your brand qualifies for will lead to dramatically improved discoverability, increased revenue, and explosive e-commerce growth. This is precisely how Label Insight supports its brand and retail customers. Label Insight was born not out of an ambition to start a business, but rather to solve a family need, a need to make sense of the limited and complex information on product labels in order to lead a better life. 
years later, we still tell the story of how we got our start and the problem we set out to solve, because our mission then is as vital today as it's ever been. We were founded by two brothers whose dad suffered a heart attack. To get well, his doctor prescribed a low sodium, low fat diet, free of trans and saturated fats and artificial ingredients. And you know, at first blush, those five dietary requirements seemed simple enough to our co-founder. He just graduated from college with a degree in nutrition. And surely with his knowledge, he could build a grocery list to help his dad get well. But you know, what he quickly discovered, and what I think all of us can relate to, was that finding the information he needed from packaging to help his dad get well proved impossible. In order to answer what seemed like five simple questions, he realized those answers required answering tens of thousands more via analysis of every single ingredient and nutrient on package. And so that's what he did. He began walking the aisles of the grocery store, picking every product up off the shelf, writing down every single piece of information on the label, every nutrient, every ingredient, allergen, claim, certification, warning statement, literally every single piece of data, so he could go home at night to research it, make sense of it in order to help his dad. Over time, he developed increasingly sophisticated ways to collect and catalog and make sense of the data. What he never could figure out was how to stop getting thrown out of the grocery store by a manager skeptical of what it was he was doing. And it wasn't until one day a store manager asked him, and he told him, and he responded with, can I buy that data from you? He realized he was solving a challenge much greater than that of his family's needs. And today, with 50% of Americans affected by a food allergy, sensitivity, or intolerance, nearly the same percentage adhering to some form of diet or health-related eating program, with the emergence of the practice of food as medicine, and the growth of e-commerce evolving the complexity with which consumers shop, the same problem we set out to solve so many years ago is as vital today as ever. And today, the label is still not enough. There's insufficient space and information to answer all the questions consumers have about the products they use and consume, or to personalize an experience for a consumer with a specific set of needs and wants. That's why Label Insights technology automates derivation of up to 24,000 attributes for a single UPC. And a significant proportion of those attributes are product details that are otherwise hidden beneath complex or scientific information on package, or just a lack thereof altogether. It's latent data, it's not explicitly stated on the label, and it's crucial to meeting the demands of consumers. So our technology identifies a raw piece of information from the label, and it asks a bunch of questions. For example, when an ingredient's identified, Label Insights Technology asks, what is this? Is it a flavor? Is it a sweetener? Is it a color? Is it a preservative? Is it natural or is it artificial? What allergen or intolerance properties does it have? What's its function? Why is it used in products like this? What can we now understand about this product from the perspective of diet or lifestyle or benefits and uses and so on? We apply similar methods to every other piece of information on package, and that's what enables Label Insight to answer any question a consumer has about a product, irrespective of an explicitly made claim on package. And we have so many questions, ketogenic, low sodium, diabetic support, no MSG, sustainable, vegan, good source of protein, free of artificial colors, celery free, low carb, contains superfoods, heart healthy, whole 30, supports digestive health. It's an endlessly growing and constantly changing list of questions and Label Insight helps to provide the answers. For us, the name of the game is improving product discoverability. Take gluten free. There are about 700 products manufactured for sale in the U.S. that contain gluten-free in the product title. Today, many e-commerce sites rely solely on the data contained within that product title to power search, which means that across most channels, and as we've seen, consumers aren't likely to find more than a few hundred gluten-free items when shopping online. When you compare that to nearly 60,000 CPG items in the U.S. that make a gluten-free claim or carry a gluten-free certification, the opportunity cost of getting this wrong or right is plain to see. But then compare that total to the number of products that actually qualify as gluten-free based on ingredient analysis, it's more than 170,000. That's 300% more products able to be discoverable. And hopefully it's plain to see that the power of derived attributes is, is clear. The same is true for literally hundreds of attributes like heart healthy, low sodium, artificial free illustrated here, but many, many, many more. And getting this right means a significant return on investment for brands and retailers. Label Insight recently helped a leading snack brand boost conversion on Amazon by more than 10% by simply making an addition of a product attribute previously unclaimed to its product title and description via an insight from our platform. We also recently helped a top 10 retailer identify how to increase the number of discoverable products via their left-hand navigation faceted search by close to 12 times the number of products. Think about that. A simple change by effectively leveraging product attribute data took a previously depleted digital storefront according to consumers' most compelling needs and wants 
and stock them fully with the products consumers are literally hungry for. So that's why Label Insight to industry's most trusted product data solution across retailers, brands, government agencies like the FDA and USDA, and leading service providers like IRI, Nielsen, One World Sync, and Catalina. More than 350 retail banners and 5,500 brands rely on Label Insight's patented data solution that provides insight into more than half a million UPCs via our database of 9 million product claims, 416,000 ingredients, 200,000 nutrients, and 24,000 attributes that support 99% of all online grocery consumer searches. Let me just say that again. Label Insights data set powers 99% of all consumer attribute-based keyword search across e-commerce. And we're here to help. We offer insight into 24,000 product attributes for each of your products. It provides an understanding of your qualifying unclaimed attributes, informed and ranked by the things consumers care most about based on how they search for CPG products online, to help you ensure your digital shelves are accurately and fully stocked, that will help you create exceptional shopper experiences and dramatically grow your e-commerce business. So to quickly recap, more consumers are moving to online grocery and searching for attributes, not products that fulfill their needs and wants. Today, it's a poor experience for consumers across so many channels whose digital shelves are depleted, understocked, or full of irrelevant results that erode consumer trust and fail to capture revenues. By not claiming the attributes their brands qualify for, products are failing to be discovered at an alarming rate. Hundreds of millions of digital shopping trips are going unfulfilled because products are failing to make the claim at the digital shelf. And as I said, we're here to help. If you'd like to know what percentage of opportunities to be discovered your brand's missing out on today, email us at sales at labelinsight.com and we'll set up a free consultation. So that concludes our presentation. Uh, it looks like we received a number of great questions from our audience throughout the webinar. Um, Lauren, will you lead us through a couple of them? Yeah, thanks, Dave. So I'm gonna start with you. Um, there's a question about our ROI example. So it says you mentioned a few examples of ROI that you were able to deliver. What did you actually test and measure to come up with that ROI? Ah, great question. Um, so for the ROI example we shared that showed sales lift, we worked very closely with um, our Snap brand customer to measure sales lift before and after we made the recommended product information changes. We used A-B testing that helped to make it clear that our changes were in fact driving the lift. Um, we measured it over a 12 week period uh, during which our customer made adjustments due to things like um, seasonality and other factors. But you know, really to, to prove the ROI of our solution, um, it's unique with each customer. You definitely need a strong partnership and someone to take ownership of helping to connect the sales data to the changes and how you're presenting your products online. And as a follow-up for anybody interested in, in understanding that more fully, um, we'd be happy to, to schedule a call. Awesome, thanks. Daniel, I've got one for you around integrations. Um, so this person wants to know, you didn't mention how this attribute data would work with our PIM and other systems. Do you have integrations? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of our software development mantras is to meet our customers where they're at. Um, we support a wide range of customers with various needs and capabilities. So we have a versatile set of integrations available. Um, we can push data directly into a retailer's catalog. Uh, we can also push our data directly into Salsify to populate your retailer item setup. If you need to bring our data into your PIM, we also have APIs uh, available for integration as, as well as monthly automated file exports. Awesome, thanks. Daniel, I'm gonna stick with you on this next one. Um, this question's about regulatory approval. So it says your poll question mentioned regulatory approval on claims. That's always a concern for us. Any best practices on finding the right balance between regulatory risk and optimizing product claim information? Yeah, we, we get this one a lot. Uh, we understand that, that brands need to be careful about what they say and the risk of legal action is a serious consideration. Um, Product attribution is our core competency as a company. We employ experts in food regulations, uh, registered dietitians, uh, experts in ingredient composition. Our aim is to arm e-commerce and marketing stakeholders with information that they can go and have an informed conversation with their legal teams. And it doesn't have to be an all or nothing uh, negotiation either. There may be some attributes that are off the table, but others that are currently unclaimed, but permissible to add your content. 
Awesome. Thanks, Daniel. Dave, I'm going to flip back to you. I've got a question around um, operationalizing data. So this person wants to know, this attribute data seems very valuable, but for a brand like ours, we would have a lot of data to deal with. It seems like it would be changing all the time. So how do your customers operationalize this data into their organizations to keep up with it? Uh, yeah, great question. You know, that's, um, that's a challenge that, that's faced throughout our industry. You know, brands are, are reformulating and renovating packaging all the time. Um, and this is a big part of the reason that, you know, the challenge to effectively manage product data exists within CPG. Because one little change to an ingredient, you know, might mean material change to nutrition and, you know, similarly significant change to what claims a product can make. And so our technology is designed to support exactly this challenge. We, we make it incredibly simple to create new and maintain existing data through either a simple drag and drop of package artwork onto our site um, or integration with the, the tools and service providers uh, our customers are using to manage things like product imagery and, and packaging. But once entered in our system, our technology takes care of the rest. Um, you know, brands integrate systems and tools and solution providers they rely on. Um, so we, we create some automated exchange of information and ensure records are kept up to date and as close to real time as possible. Uh, and then our customers access their data either within our platform or we deliver it via an API or other technical modes of automated integration in order to create customized workflows based on the unique needs of our customers. And once in those tools, um, our brand uh, customers have the ability to easily disseminate the data that we've created in partnership with our customers um, out to their retail partners to optimize content for greater discoverability and conversion online. Great, thanks Dave. Daniel, I'm gonna flip back to you. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come in around frequency um, and, and changes to top attribute search. So the first one is, is there a frequency trend as in a time frame for a change in that top attribute searches? So for example, the attribute word searches are not the same today as they were a year ago. Correct, yeah. Um, you know, even, even setting the sort of massive impact that um, coronavirus has had uh, before that, you know, attributes change significantly month over month. Um, I think when we looked at this, uh, we found that, that the, the most searched for attribute within a category changes about every month and a half. Uh, and even when attributes maintain uh, their relative rank within their category, uh, they're rarely stagnant and they're, they're showing some sort of growth or, or diminish, uh, diminishing interest. So the second question around frequency is how often should retail content be updated on site with new attributes? So depending on the retailer and your level of control, uh, we'd recommend that you update content as trends change, which could be as frequently as every month. Um, you know, we understand the challenge that comes along with that. Updating change, uh, Changing hidden keywords or paid search strategies may be something that brands can update frequently with fewer barriers than the effort required to update um, your, your product detail page bullet points and uh, product title. Uh, a good practice is to update your content at least quarterly though. Great, thanks Daniel. Dave, I'm gonna flip back to you. Um, I've got a question about um, how to go about updating product titles. So for example, there are character counts that grocery retail sites limit us with, and sometimes we have to, be, we have to fully delete the product from the grocery site in order to make any updates. Is that, is that a question you can answer? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's not a, uh, a a problem we can solve for directly of how a retailer does and does not allow you to interact with content on, on their site. What Label Insight can help to inform is uh, providing insights of what attributes to include in your product title. Because what we do is not only tell you all the things that are true about your product, um, both the things that you're already claiming, um, but in addition to all the things that you're very likely unclaiming as well, um, ordered in stack ranking, along with data that exposes the volume of keyword searches for those attributes. So you might look today and realize that you've got product titles with attributes that might only be the third or fourth most searched for attribute that consumers care about. 
Um, and we can help you understand that there are potentially uh, more compelling attributes and ways to modify content to uh, improve discoverability and boost performance online. Awesome, thanks Dave. Daniel, I'm gonna go back to you for this next one. Um, this person says, I was blown away by some of the stats you shared on missed searches. Where did all those stats come from? Great question. Uh, so we have a panel of 9 million consumers where we capture on-site search activity across uh, all the retailers that you saw on, on one of those previous slides. Uh, Amazon, Walmart, Instacart, Target, Ship, Kroger, and Albertsons. Uh, this is how we know the exact search terms that consumers uh, are searching for on these sites and how frequently those terms are being searched each month. We analyze that search data to understand what attributes matter most to consumers within product categories on each site. This is how we know that, for example, like protein is the most searched for attribute in lunch snacks. Then we marry these search insights to our database of product attributes um, to rank the attributes that a UPC qualifies for based on volume of search. The missed searches are instances where consumers are searching for an attribute in a product's category. And we were able to derive that the product could claim the attribute based on our analysis of its ingredients and nutrients. So there are other attributes that uh, a product might qualify for based on derived analysis. So for example, you know, we could tell you that products in the poultry category are caffeine free, um, but you know, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't call that out uh, as, as a missed opportunity because consumers don't actually search for caffeine-free in, in, in the poultry category. Got it. All right, thanks. I'm gonna switch back to Dave. I've got a couple of startup questions for you. Dave, are there any free or minimal cost resources to identify keyword searches relevant to my products? Or how can a startup work with Label Insight, if at all? Sure. So, um, you know, we're, we're not in the business of uh, offering our solution for free, but we certainly are uh, in the business of consulting our CPG and, and retail customers on trends related to e-commerce and content. And as a follow-up to, to this webinar, uh, we'd be more than happy to spend time with you and, and provide what insights we can uh, over, over a phone call or a virtual meeting. Um, in terms of, you know, startups, we, we work with some of the largest CPGs and retailers in the world, um, and we work with very small brands and retailers as well as solution providers. Uh, we have a highly customized, configurable solution, um, so can find a way to work with anybody within their budget, um, and we do also offer special pricing for uh, emerging brands. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. I'm going to stick with you for this agency question. So um, this person wants to know, do you provide agency level access to your product data attribution? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we work with um, you know, lots of solution providers. We work with digital agencies um, beyond CPG and, and retail. There are many, many um, stakeholders and, and, and constituents of, of our data. Um, would, would love an opportunity to understand that agency's business and uh, figure out how we could potentially work together. Great, thanks. Daniel, I'm gonna come back to you. Um, I've got a couple of product title questions. Um, so the first one is, this person wants to know, let's say a brand claims its attributes and lists them in its product titles. How does it then increase its position on the digital shelf and avoid getting buried by bigger brands? And how do we hack that poor e-commerce search algorithms that you've shown? Yeah. Uh, so. Our studies have shown that updating your product title to include attributes uh, can increase your position and click-through rate uh, when that attribute is searched. Um, we, we would recommend not only including the most popular searches, um, but, but also the rate of competition uh, into you know, deciding what you include in your, uh, in your product title. So for example, gluten-free might seem hyper-competitive and it might be hard for a smaller brand to play there, but a newer trend associated with uh, grain-free, for example, might have lower competition, uh, but increasing search and a higher intent uh, to conversion ratio. 
Great, thanks. We've got um, a food service question. What insights do you have for food service? Uh, I, I could take that one. Sure. Sorry, Daniel. Um, yeah, so we don't currently offer product level analysis for, for food service, um, but we do offer category level insights. So food to professionals can gain insight into the most important attributes and, and specific categories that, that they sell in. Um, you know, really our, our business and our technology is based on a UPC code and uh, typically a nutrition facts panel and ingredient declaration. And with that data, um, we've got the ability to produce resultant data sets that offer all kinds of insights. So there's certainly potential uh, from a food service perspective. Great, thanks. We've got two more. So um, one, is, one says great presentation. Is your data representative of the general primary shopper or does it represent results from clean label enthusiasts and how are they different or similar? Yeah, I can I can field this one. Um, so if 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 my previous answer uh, about our our panel um, didn't didn't answer this for you, uh, we we utilize a consumer panel of shoppers um, that that are not you know they're not opting in based on any sort of um, dietary preference or or interest in in uh, or enthusiasm for clean label. Uh, these are these are just uh, a random sampling of of consumers online. Um, we also work with retailers and media companies to support audiences and pair our data with um, past purchase data to fuel audiences and make these available to brands and retailers as retailers like. Got one final question. Dave, I'll turn it back to you for this one. What's the frequency of updating attribute changes in the Label Insight database? Uh, yep, yeah, sorry, that, that's, uh, that, that's a great question. I was, had, was, on, was on mute there. Um, you know, we, we observe significant changes across attributes month over month. Um, you know, the stat we like to attribute to this is the relative rank of the most searched attributes on a product changes every month and a half. So even when attributes maintain the rank, um, they're rarely stagnant uh, and instead, you know, show trending or, or, or growth or, or, or diminished interest. You know, we also, we employ registered dietitians and food scientists and regulatory experts and um, you know, other subject matter experts with scientific backgrounds in chemistry and, and biology for other categories relevant across CPG. And we're always monitoring trends around things that consumers search for. Uh, we're obviously looking at all the things that consumers search for across top channels like Amazon and Kroger and Target and Instacart. And we learn something new every day of things that consumers care about. Um, so, you know, I think I'm trying to remember the, the exact stat, but in the last uh, quarter, uh, we, we released dozens of, of new attributes related to changes in regulation, changes in, in people's interests around certain types of ingredients uh, and, and things of that nature. So we're, we're updating our data all the time. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Daniel. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, a reminder that if any additional questions pop up for you, feel free to contact us. And if we didn't get to your question, um, we'll be sure to email you back within the next 24 hours with an answer. Um, and we'll sign off here. Thank you all again so much for joining us today. Stay safe and healthy and feel free to reach out to us anytime. Bye.